Right. Well, uh, without further ado, we're going to start. Well, there will be one or two people, uh, well, two people joining us, but welcome to um, today's webinar. As part of a series on behalf of uh, the Growth Hub in the Humber. So, uh, normal rules apply. We've got, we're going to be recording uh, uh, the webinar today, so it'll be available on various YouTube channels. Please feel free to use the chat line uh, if you have any questions at all. And particularly as well, if you have, we come across a topic on our journey uh, today that you want to know more about. We're really grateful if you if you uh, make a note uh, about it. We've got quite a big topic, um, quite a big topic to cover this afternoon. Now, naturally, we can't cover it all in a short space of time. So, so that's the bad news. But there is good news. Good news as well. There's, there's good news today as well as bad news. Uh, there's going to be some jokes. There's going to be some jokes. I know. And I, I know. I know. I know they're not all funny. We catch you. We've got to have you know Tuesday's not the same. It does. I'm not taking up an hour of your time without you know having a little bit of levity. So that is uh, that's what the plan is. Now also <laughs> you know you you've, had, you've you've got it all today. There's going to be a quiz. There's a quiz as well, and we're going to start with a quiz. So we've got the um, we've got we've got pe various people joining us. But you know you're just in time. You're just in time for the quiz. Yeah, just in time for the quiz. Here comes Pamela. Right, here we go. Let's start the quiz. Let's start the quiz. And it's an easy one today. It's an easy one today. You want to know all about that? Be on the first page of Google. But we're going to have a little quiz to start the ball rolling. True or false? True or false? Answers as we go along. Right. There we go. Most people leave your website if they can't get their want, get what they want in three clicks. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, false. So, um, oh, uh, showing a picture of uh, false teeth might uh, dent your reputation. Second one, Google is more popular than all other search engines together. True or false? Yeah, well, that much is true. Just a little reference to the 1980s there for those of you who were uh, used to remember those times. Gosh, doesn't it take you? Doesn't it take you back? My goodness. Right. Most people only click on results on the first page of Google. True or false? Well, so true. Funny how it seems. Yes. You might have gathered by now there are one or two references to music, and there will be some film references a little later as well, so keep your eyes peeled. How are you doing? Yeah? Okay, right, question four. Most people don't read web pages if they have more than a few hundred words on them. What do you think about that one then? Mm. Always false. <laughs> There's a man who it's always false. That one, and I'll exp I'm going to explain the answers to these questions as we go through. There was a gentleman who made a stir. Right, next question. Well, <laughs> yeah, don't expect me to read that question out. Of course, it's not true. Of course, it's not true. This is just part of the uh, part of the Tuesday entertainment. Right, next question. I can hardly, I can, I can hardly, you know, the excitement this afternoon. Oh, oh, oh. You need to blog every two or three days to make an impact. True or false? How are you doing? Well, ah, here you go. Anyone remember that film? Anyone know? Anyone know what that is? I'm going to check in on you later. Well, you know you don't have to blog every two or three days. Billy Liar, what a great film! Hey, oh, quick bit of trivia. We'll add a bit of trivia. A gentleman on the left, Tom Courtney, great actor, one of Hull's most favourite or famous sons. Yes. If you so, there we go. Let's move on. Right. Next question. Oh, no. Who put that one in there? I don't know who put that one in there. 
Well, all right then, all right then. Okay, okay, I'll let you off. Right, number seven, online marketing only works for large companies who are willing to spend thousands. Hmm. Well, well, true lies, partly true, partly false. You do get, you do, you, uh, the more you put in, the more you get out. But you can still uh, get a lot from, um, from uh, a small investment. And I'll come on to why. All right, next one. Hey, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, only 54 minutes left. How can I keep this up? Right, uh, web pages with bullet points or pictures are proven to do better. Mm. True or false? Ah, that one's true. It is. And again, and we'll come on to that in a bit more detail. This is all. Uh, it. Oh, number 10, number 10. The best form of oh, number nine. I ahead of myself. Uh, the best form of marketing is still considered to be word of mouth. Hmm. Well, of course, it, it probably will be for some time. You know, recommendations, referrals, etc. But uh, but we are uh, the importance of being on the first page of Google cannot be underestimated because that in itself could be argued to be a form of word of mouth. And finally, question ten. Next week's Tuesday webinar will be about how you can market your business for free. Yes. Well, got to have a plug in there somewhere. Always try and find ample room for a plug, especially if I'm in my own home. Right, let's move on. Enough of this tomfoolery. Right, let's get on with it. Oh, right. Well, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Where's the best place to hide a dead body? Now, what are you thinking? This bloke is having a bit of a mad moment. He's going to come with some contrived reference to the film Shallow Grave. No, he isn't, because here's the joke. The best place to hide a dead body is the second page of a Google search. Boom, boom. It's well documented that about 75% of users never scroll past the first page of search results. Think about your own behavior. Do you go back looking beyond the first page? You may, you know, if you've got a very specific search, you may choose to do so. But generally speaking, we habit the first page. All right. So, what? So, how do we get on the first page of Google? Well, we've had, so let's have a little think about that. Well, I'll tell you what we could do. We could do. We can pay for the privilege being on the first page of Google, commonly known as pay-per-click, PPC. And as you can see there, I've chosen an example where there's a, a candle holders and, and, and an advertisement has been placed on Google. So that's how you can get on the first page of Google by paying to be on it. There we go. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening this afternoon. I really hope you enjoyed uh, the webinar. Uh, you know, I've just given you everything you need to know and uh, escape the countries on in a minute. So hopefully you can enjoy that. And thank oh, I'm only jesting. I'm only jesting. So, right. You can pay to be on the front page of Google. Hang on a second. Some of you thinking that's a straight, that's not as easy to think. You know, I'm not a geek, all that kind of stuff. Well, hang fire there because you can spend money with Google. And here is a horrible slide. In this slide appeared a little email to myself. And here is first tip of the day. Gosh, look at that on the left-hand side. You can get a credit of £75 if you spend £25 with Google. Now, on the right-hand side, you might have noticed, and you will get a copy of these slides, forgot to mention at the start, you, will, you can see an, a, a code and a free phone number. Did you know, this is no joke, did you know that you could ring up Google for free and you'll get through to a call centre in Ireland and they will help you ads on Google. They will explain how it's done. Now, naturally, um, there is, because of social distancing, issues relating to their manning of their uh, call center and activity in Ireland. But you can ring up Google and talk to them. 
of which I actually did yesterday. And I was doing some work on behalf of clients. So don't worry about being in, in, the, in a paper click, being geeky, being something you can do. As long as you've got basic computer skills, you've got a number, and you can talk to somebody, you can happily spend money with Google, get yourself on the first page, and you can produce all your analytics, and you can see if it works. On behalf of a client, I'm spending a hundred pounds, and did that yesterday, to have a little dabble in the world of pay-per-click. That's how to get yourself very inexpensively on the first page of Google. Hey, I didn't expect that, did you, today? So, uh, actually, I'm normally barred uh, from putting uh, pictures of William Shakespeare up, and uh, but I know it's as you like it. So we're going to talk now about great words and keywords. That's an important thing for your advertisement or for your copy. When you're putting an advert on Google, there are two things that you need to focus on. Your headline is the key driver for your ad. And the actual, it must contain relevant keywords and be persuasive. And these are two teams that will run through the rest of the afternoon. Here is an example of an advertisement that's been run on Google. And you can see on the headline, the, the, not, not on commission, by the way, don't worry. So I won't get anything uh, from the earphone company. You can see that on the, on the title there, the name of the company, take your music with you. And then the copy underneath, I know you can read it to yourself, but immerse yourself in music no matter where you are with JLB headphones, get yours today. And headphones is in bold because it's a keyword. It's also in the, in the URL there. And there's a call to action and there's an offer. And underneath you can see you've got stay fit and you can shoot well. So that is a very powerful advertisement. Now the key thing with this uh, advertisement here is that it's well documented that if you post with a higher emotional value, get more shares. We're not writing in a robotic way. And this is also a key thing to remember when you're posting and writing email marketing or headlines, even on your social media. Now, some of you are going to say, well, about this, now, th three things there. <laughs> There are books you can write on this subject. You'll get a copy of the slide. Remember, there's three ways of getting emotional type. There's intellectual, you know, so you get words that are effective in terms of the reasoning. The empathetic, stringing out positive emotions in people. People think saying words like, you know, I think Hull City are wonderful. And then spiritual stuff like saying, oh my God, you know, aren't Hull terrible. But joking aside, you can see intellectual, empathetic, and spiritual. It is the nature of the words you write in the headline that's going to grab people's attention. This is the crossover between marketing as a science and marketing as an art. The next thing, little tip for you, is to think that you may wish to actually, I'm gonna whisper this, you can borrow some of your competitors' keywords. So, this particular accountancy company are actually referencing a competitor. Why pay for X when you can have ours for free? And all they're doing is borrowing your competitor's keywords. There is no rule book telling you you cannot do this. It's using a competitor's keyword, but the link is to another company's site. Hey, clever. And then I've talked about the emotional, the intellectual, and the spiritual. Well, write in good copy. These are ads here. What kind of acne do you have? Get help for your acne. It's great copy. It's questions. It's, in, it's drawing people in. Let's do the, a, little, you know, a little bit of homework for you. you know, forget Emmerdale tonight. Go back and just you know, look, at, look, on, um, look on various ads and just think about what's drawing you in. Invariably, it is good copy. But... Here's an advertisement. The next rule of thumb is when you are going to unleash some dog walking uh, uh, stories on you now. And here we go. There's a home page 
and dog walking, so they've run an ad. But what they've done, and they're, they're trying to get people to go to their home page. It's great to have good copy. You end up there. Key thing is when you're running ads, you want people often to go to an exciting page. Now, with all due respect, that, that home page there is a bit of a pup. It's not great, but you could go to a different home page from a competitor, get a Rover so 30, certified dog walker. It's far more engaging. You know, these two um, dog companies breeds apart. So the home page, dull, great landing page. So it's not just about getting on first page, it's where people go, which brings me to that point. Ultimately, you've heard this expression, it's about the click through rate. You want people to click and you want them to click through and carry on on a journey with you. Okay? That is a whistle stop or through pay per click. So we're going to be looking at other webinars where we may cover that in far more detail. There are some tips there. You can pay to be on Google, you can ring them up, you can do it inexpensively. Right. Let's think about this. If you would like to appear high on Google, here, it's import, really important that you register your business with Google, and it's Google My Business. So you pick it up in searches, and that's through Google. You end up with this type of scenario. So you have the Google My Business page, and you can see what you do, what you've what happens there. You've got a whole microsite relating to your particular company. I'm going to show you a live example in a minute. On the Google My Business page that you own, that you register with Google, you have the opportunity to describe it. You've got lots of keywords in which to describe it with. Next thing is that then you have the opportunity to list it as well. You can list it under various different categories. This particular company, a Brighton-based business, they're a software company, but they're also a marketing consultant and internet marketing. You can actually pick three different battles on which to fight. Also on your Google My Business, you've got the opportunity to put some very engaging pictures with this company's done in Brighton. Again, lots there. And also you get fantastic analytics. You can see how many people have clicked on each picture. And yeah, there's the ubiquitous blog as well. And then it becomes a microsite and a great blogging site. So you can see where that, that is heading. You've got the opportunity to update your customers with events, with the promotions, and Google are encouraging you to put a COVID-19 uh, posting up there as well. And the key thing then with Google My Business, it's the place to go generate Google reviews. So you would encourage people, customers, you send them a link from your Google My Business and you create a review which gives you social proof and credibility. I'm going to talk in a moment about position zero. And I'm going to stop the share. <gasps> What's he doing? And I'm going to start the share again because I'm going to show you a little something if I can get this working right. If I can get this working right, I hope so. And start the share again. Let's start the share again. Can't do that. Can you see that? Share my screen again. Now, time is short today. So I'm just going, I've just done this. Hopefully. You can see that on the screen. I hope so. Anyone give me a thumbs up? You can see that Google page. Yeah, right. Now, any have, quick time out. Have I lost anybody? I hope it's been fairly simple so far. Try to keep it geek free. Yeah, right. Whew. Right, what I've got there. Ooh, let's see if it's working. Here we go. Let's just shut this up. Right. You are one I did earlier. I just want to explain this in a bit more detail. I have typed in florists, okay? So what it's 
done, it's brought up the first page of Google. You can see the top page has got the advertisements, which we've already very briefly covered on pay-per-click. Those of you who probably didn't fully grasp what I'm saying, it then picks up, I'm, I'm, I live in here, well, actually not in that, not on the motorway, but in that area, and, and it comes, it's picked up the local, three local searches by Google relative to where I am. Melanie's, Victoria, and the Flower House. And then I'll be faced with a decision potentially as a customer. Ask myself this question, and I'm going to ask you the same question. Who would you go to? Well, my, without knowing anything else about those businesses. I would the first probably, one. Probably, yeah, people may have the first one. It's only got one review, though. Flower House has got 26 reviews and Melanie's has got 19, 18 reviews. You can see the quality of reviews is driving potential traffic there, but that's about using Google My Business. You might also, oh, Sam, if yeah. you have a look, if you, if you look, uh, if you know the area, obviously you'll know it better than I do, but 0113 is a Leeds, light, Leeds number and 01937, I think is Weatherby, is that Weatherby. correct? Correct. So again, Along with the what's first, like a uh, fellow uh, listener mentioned, also a number of reviews, but also locality may play a key driver as well from a local perspective. So what you can do in this situation, thank you, Mark, is to actually think about your own phone number as well. They put leads, and if you want to appear, then you just buy a local phone number, and you could argue that having a mobile may or may not be an advantage. But ultimately, marketing is about perception. So here, you've got the advertisements, and you've got the localization of Google My Business. You then have the high organic searches, which we're gonna come back to. And underneath that, do you know what that is, where it says people also ask? Anybody? Google suggests. Not quite. It is known as position zero. Right, I'm going to I'm going to go back to my. I haven't got that. I'm going to explain this now. I'm going to go back this, to the presentation. Let's see if we can get this going on that. I've got a little, very quick look. Paper click. Google my business. And now we come to position zero. What is position zero? I don't know what does it say it is this it is also known as a featured snippet okay so it often appears as you saw with florists that and it's usually a answer it's a list of questions and this is what it is that slide this one featured snippet are answers that appear high in search results and are pulled from relevant websites Usually includes a summary, details of the web page, and a URL. And as the bottom suggests, these are really a powerful space to occupy. If you could get to the featured snippet, that would be great because you end up both being the king and the queen, high on a search, not having to pay for it, but not quite because. Being you are placed above normally the top search result, but Google only allows one organic search for each company, usually on a first page. But being in position zero is very valuable. Now, what are you thinking? Hang on a second, how do I get to position zero? Well, a lot of searches now are done to my, to my friend Alexa or Siri or wherever it is. You're asking Google a, or, or, or your search engine a question and you're getting an answer. It's voice search brings voice response. So this is a trick. What you want to make sure is that, on, that these are all, this is Google organically generating this to get first page results. You need to have relevant information on your site and it's formatted well. So what you'd like to do on this situation here is that you 
probably would create pages or blogs on your website where you asking questions and answering them and it's formatted in that particular way if you're doing that and you're creating questions and answers and there's various other different factors involved but that's a good starting point you've got a good fighting chance of being a featured snippet or position zero and you can see i just chose one at random people also ask which was the florist question that there's all these questions here now what you might the answers are on the are in front of you because these are the questions that people are asking so why don't you on your website answer them so for example if you were a florist or a plumber or a builder or an architect or an accountant you go in you you look at the keywords you find the questions that are being genuinely asked and you answer them on your website because the questions you, you the answers are there the, the, the question the answers are, are presented in front of you it's just a matter of knowing where to look for them and and then changing your copy on your website you're actually giving value to people okay so there's the feature snippets and the people also ask so in summary what i advise you to do on your website is design your content answer questions the questions may already have been asked on google or appear within a featured snippet you naturally then will hold a high rank in a search but the key way of doing this often is to produce it in combination of headings and lists on your own website so it's very readable hopefully it made sense so featured snippets are a great way and a free way to get on the first page of google Woo. right half an hour in right Back in 1998, two gentlemen met. One was, it's like story time. One was called Larry, one was called Sergei. And they produced, one was a software developer, on, on entrepreneur. And there we are. We start, the company was born. Uh, so it was very much geared around algorithms and what people search for. And that was the, the definition very much of, of, of Google. Now, this is the biggest question. Google now uses 200 ranking factors in their algorithm to determine which content gets on the first page. This is the hard bit, and, and the bit will cover for the next few minutes. It's a bit like the Coca-Cola recipe. You think it, you, you're never quite sure of the answer, but I'm going to cover some points to uh, hopefully help you out. But 200 factors, we need to find the, the key ones. Now, it's considered that the three most important ranking factors on a Google search links, content, rank brain. I'm going to cover these. So, the, the idea is very much that you will need to have links into your website. And you can see here you need links there's a there's a there's a correlation between your position on on google and the number of referring domains so you'll need links out of your website and links into your website now some of you are asking how do we get links well you can link to your social media you can link back you can link to articles and link back there's lots of different places to get links and obviously in a future webinar we'll go into far more detail but it's linking out to your own material linking back etc so links horrible heavy slide links are considered about 22 percent of google's algorithm they're absolutely critical trust anchor text and all the other areas we're going to come on to a huge part of what you do so linking out linking back it's learning how to do that whether you do it yourself or through your web designer secondly 
The idea is that when it comes to this, his content is king. So you need to have authority and your content should be relevant, updated and fresh and detailed. If you think about this is the benefit of blogging or putting content on your web pages. It needs to have authority. There's a genuine correlation on that one. So it's the expertise, the content. The third bit is about what we call rank brain. It's about the it's about the word count as well as that. So often you should be writing long form content. If you're writing lots of not not hundreds and hundreds of pages, but more quite a few thousand, no, maybe up to a thousand words. If you do that, you're more likely to get social shares, you're getting more backlinks, and it's boosting the topical relevance of a page. Writing more copy, quality copy, is more likely to give to, to, to tackle the issue about content, about links, and about authority. Okay, content, links, rank brain. Now, this is the key thing here. Quite a busy slide, but I'm going to, it, really important. You must present your content in a user friendly manner. It's about the layout, the fonts, the images. Now, the bit under is to take Google wants you to have perceived to have authority. So you've got to think that your content has got to be different in scope and detail, and similar content. Don't run with the flow, presenting good content. And ideally, it's going to be quality, trustworthy, useful, engaging, and remarkable. But the reason why I put trustworthy in there, you can link, for example, if you could be citing people in your copy, like whoever it might be, researchers in your field, it's giving kudos to what you do. You write it in well laid out, different in scope, and it's considered to be high quality. If you if you achieve those things, Google will think you're a good lad. Okay, I mean, it's simple, not a great technical term, because search engine optimization is considered to be all and now largely about the user experience. It's a key part, and there's a there's an a, there's part of the Google uh, playbook is talking about something called Google. E, E A T. The E stands for expertise, the A for authority, and the T for trustworthiness. It's well worth looking that up because it'll give you lots of answers to the question it's about giving people the visitors to your website a good experience. Because if people arrive on your website and leave after 10 seconds or a short amount of time, there's a high bounce rate, Google doesn't seem to think you've got great authority. If you're producing great content, if people are reading and staying on your website, you'll get authority. Okay? That's what happens. The rank brain uses the user experience. You type in keyword, it turns it into a concept, it produces results for you. And then if the page, if 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 the visitor spends time on the page and doesn't leave immediately, it ranks the page higher. Think of it, your website is like a shop. People find the shop, they come in the shop and have a great experience there. That is what Google likes. Hence the real importance of looking at your analytics to see how long and what experience your customers are getting. Okay? Right. Next bit. I'm sure we've got about a quarter an hour to cover this. Be on your first page of Google. So hopefully we've covered pay-per-click, Google Pay My Business, and the key things you need to do in terms of the performance of the website. The next bit is to get the website right. Big topic, small amount of time. Five things to do. Number one, your website must, I mean must, be mobile friendly. You can see it on tablets and on laptops, etc. You must do that. The second thing, it must be fast loading. It's from the customer experience point of view, 
and from uh, people will leave if it's not fast loading. Well, I don't know if it's fast loading. Right. Two tools you can use. In, uh, Google Page Speed Insights and Kingdom. My horse, my horse, my kingdom, or kingdom for a horse. Kingdom. You use speed tests. You type, these are free tools to use. You type them in, type in your domain name, and you are away. It'll tell you what you need to do with your website. Well, hey, the next thing, as I mentioned, your website must be easy to use. Clear navigation. You are not the judge of that. Your clients are, your friends are. You can have a look at what you do, the, but your, the, the way that you're, you can navigate your way around. Second, fourthly, your site ideally should it should ideally it should be secure. But it is here's a good one. HTTPS. What does all that mean? Well, it's when you look on a website and it's got a lock on it. It refers to the fact that the HTTPS is an encrypted version of the original transfer hypertext transfer protocol is a means of transferring data around the web. Having a secure version means that the communication between the browser and the server can't be attacked by the bad guys. Really simple explanation. But if you to do anything about this is to make sure that you have got a secure website, HTTPS. Well, quick self-promotion moment. This is little old me, the good old days when I used to wear a shirt and tie. I haven't worn a shirt and tie for quite some time. Yeah, probably oh, don't fit me now, all that eating I've been doing. So uh, you just click on there and you can see that there is a CA number, it's a certificate, and you, you can do that. So it's, if you need to make sure you've got that, you can see at the top there, HTTPS. And you've got a certificate identifying the security of the website. If you transact, over a website absolutely essential and you can pick up a certificate by doing it yourself or speaking through your designer or server right this thing mobile friendly fast load easy to use secure well structured what does all that mean really simple stuff you need to have a logical way of moving your way around your website people need to find things it's not a treasure hunt and they need to locate what they're looking for. It's how it, it's just the way that people behave on your website. Because if your website is appealing to your users, it appeals to search engines. Sometimes when you look at the likes of Amazon, it's not a great website from a design point of view, cosmetically, but from a functional point of view, it's fantastic. You can find things logically, you know where they are, you can search and look at other websites, take a leaf out of the big boys book. The website can't be, is a good word, a labyrinthian. Is that such a word? I don't know, I've made it up if it isn't. So it can't be a labyrinth. So well structured. What ideally then happens is that you may generate site links. Oh my goodness, what's all that about? Often you see, when you land on a page, you can see that there's a website there and underneath, it's all the different places of the way that the website is logically listed and all about it. If your website's logically done and, it, and it's not a um, maze, you might end up with site links. Again, it breeds credibility. You must get yourself five things, make sure your website is performing well. Okay. What's next? What's next? Oh my goodness. You need to have a little bit of patience. Mm. Because solitaire is the only game in town. Come on. Right. Getting on the first page of Google is not an overnight activity. It might be if you are willing to pay for the privilege, but let's be honest, it does take time. So please bear that in mind. We're going to name drop now. Name dropping. Who's on the next screen? Oh, let me have a think. Who is it? Can't remember. Gary Isles, Gary Illies. Who is Gary Illies? I -L, L Y E S. Well, sometimes Google will give you the answer to the questions. Have you ever thought one that if you're ever looking for blogs and information, look 
the people in Google, they'll tell you what to do. And he just described, stick to the basics. And they're all the time, they're trying to outfox a lot of companies, but read what Google are actually saying. There we go. Right. Just really quickly, although this is probably in some people's eyes, the most important part of search engine optimization. It's those keywords that you type into Google so you get high on the page. You need to know what the keywords are. Now, I'm going to keep this on the screen. We are going to do another webinar in a week or two's time about keywords, and we're going to do it much more interactive. We will show you this. There's four tools, all of which are free. Well, oh, <laughs> they're free to a point. You have to pay if you want the deluxe version, but you can get good keyword search by using those platforms. Google, you could argue, is the Rolls Royce and all the others are derivatives. There's four places to go to do some keyword searches. Okay. Now, the starting point is known to look for seed keywords, the sort of basic keywords. I've just done a quick example here. I'm looking for the word vitamins. It's a quite a broad term. Sometimes you look underneath, you type in vitamins, and then Google produces the next 10 listings that show the key searches. Ooh, so you might think that you might want that again in volume about the keywords but then you put a link word in and it starts to produce different results so people might not necessarily type in vitamins and growth but then they'll look for vitamins and then you will look for vitamins for women and then you can produce a more relevant keyword searches if you were making a providing a product or a service that was rated to vitamins for women you may choose that your your keyword is vitamins for women over a certain age what that means in real terms is vitamins as a word is a is a big pond and you're going to go and fish in a smaller pond where you've got a better chance of being on the first page of google by choosing a phrase with distinct keywords in that may be longer. And that's important. The next thing to think about when you found keywords is what you rank for yourself. So absolutely essential. You go on and find out what your website ranks for. How do what keywords are people typing in to find you? I just do that. Go on to the Google. Search Console, and you'll find out by typing in your website the queries that people are looking for and the amount of clicks and the activity, all there in front of your very eyes. That will help you if you've done some organic keyword looking searches and you've used the Google Search Console, you're getting closer. You can then have a look at what your competition are doing. Here's one of those where a different website, RFs, organic keywords, you type in the competitor's website and it produces the keywords that they rank for. As I mentioned earlier, there's no harm whatsoever in fighting over the same keywords because that's what customers are looking for. So find what your competitors are looking for. And then you want to know the search volumes. You've got your list, you've got a wider, longer list. And you've got your search volume, so you'll know where you might want to think about using keywords that you've found. And that's the question you're probably asking. Once you've found keywords, then what? Well, here we go. You will then optimize the titles on your website. As you can see, the page title and the meta description, page title in blue, the meta description underneath. You will make good copy, like we saw earlier, including the keywords in those titles. First rule. Again, you might want to think about having emotional content in there. And then on the pages themselves, you want to optimize the pages. So the headers 
often known as H1, H2, H3, with tags. You put in the keywords in the body, and then any images you're putting on the website you wish to name using alt text. You can describe an image using keywords. Now, the, what you mustn't do is pack your pages on your website with copy. Google will come on, put you on their naughty step, and it doesn't matter how big you are, you're not as big as them. So don't pack them. Often you can find within a website, there are SEO tools called like Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, that will help you decide on the, the keywords and the quantity and where to use them. The next thing to do is then once you know your keywords, put them in your website, as I mentioned, also put them on your, use the same keywords on the social media, in your directories or any other listings, looking at your other content. So really simple kind of, not, not just your website, but other places. As I mentioned, you may wish to target long tail keywords, like why well, use the example of vitamins, he got tomato plant, when to plant tomatoes, why are my tomato plants turning yellow? Has a lower search volumes, but higher conversion rates. And it's a double whammy because the longer tail keywords are also seen on featured snippets. As we saw earlier, so you may want to think about that. The keywords could be longer sentences. You're asking yourself that I can't compete with the big boys. They've got, you know, so, but you can because what you do, you use the listings, you use review sites like TripAdvisor, you use Google My Business, you use forums like Quora, and you use affiliates like Airbnb. Get yourself the site Gravitas. You may only be a, a, a David up against Goliath, but you can actually punch above your weight. So, hope not every hotel search in London is going to bring up TripAdvisor, but you want to use them because it's known as barnacle SEO. You're sticking somebody else's SEO. TripAdvisor may be high on my list, but you've got to make sure that your listing within TripAdvisor is correctly optimized and elsewhere. Also, Parasite SEO which is using blogs. You write content and then you post your blogs on great sites, so the best blogging site in which to use, the likes of Medium. You, you write a blog, you put it on your website, you just blog it elsewhere, oh, and it creates links to get back to your site. You just are putting your content in a place where it's seen by more people and it's giving you marks out of 10 and it's getting you back. And in, finally, be creating a blogs, you want a few tips. Leave this on the screen for a moment. Creating blogs, you want to look for keywords. You can find those on and to the public. Headlines that are, are common and popular on co-schedule and topics. And you can use Grammarly.com to help you write the copy. Great little blogging tips there. And again, we're going to cover blogging in another in another webinar further down the line. Critically, and finally, we're, it's COVID-19, a sensitive time. There's many people are struggling. So as I've said in previous webinars, think about your content, educate, not irritate, provide helpful content, and show some value in your time of crisis. That's been reading the room. So think about all those things that you can doing as well when you're creating content and blogging. Woo! three, I'm up. What's up next? We've got afternoon tea and crumpets in the Shepherd household. Yep, looking forward to that. Any of you would like any help with a marketing one-to-one -one and to go through SEO in far more detail, that is up, that's on, on the table and that's funded by the Humber. Everybody's registered. They will get a copy of the slides. You'll get those through and you'll get an invitation to next week.
Oh wait, what's next week all about? Oh my goodness. All the things you can do to market your business for free. A lot of what I've talked about today, you can do for free. Some not, but we're going to take all the different things, lots of tips to do it for free. So without further ado, there's my contact details. I'm going to stop sharing. I wish I could sing. You can unmute yourselves and I'm going to go to the chat line. Where are we? Let's get the chat line up. Here we go. Any questions? Any questions? I'm going to go down the chat line. Let's have a look. We've got a few people here. Does that include YouTube, which Google own? Yes, YouTube is a great search engine. It's the second biggest. You may wish to think about using a lot of the um, keywords, etc., and tactics. YouTube. Mark, I think I spend out. Brand Duran were better. Well, that's point of opinion, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The reviews. Check the reviews. Not that, yes, the reviews was a great point mentioned about that. Thank you, Simon. That was a fantastic whistle stop tour. Well, that's very kind of Pete to say that. Thank you, that. Thank you. Oh, lots of thank yous. Whew. SEO in 50 minutes. How about that? I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm having a drink. I'm having a drink. Oh, you can love it. You know, it's cocktail hour somewhere. It isn't it? So, has anybody. Oh, another question appeared. Do you have any ad advice for the number of keywords to use on the home page? James, great question. Advice the number of keywords. I think the key thing is to find the right keywords and then to use them, as I mentioned, in the title, the meta description, the headings, and the content. So not, but don't pack them too, too heavily, I suppose, is the question there. Answer to that one. Any others? Oh, if anyone has got any questions, I'm going to hang around until three o'clock. You can unmute yourself if you feel free to do so, and I'll take the questions in person. If not, I'll answer them by chat. And if no one's got any questions coming up, I don't see on the list. I will bid you a good afternoon the one final tip to think about when you look at your website and you look up google think of it always the customer's point of view you don't know what they're looking for because either everyone looks at things differently that's where you've got to combine science with art Thinking about what people are looking for is usually a scientific answer, but then also then use an art, make sure you present your business in the right way. That's probably the overriding thing. But there's lots of tools you can use. From spending money, Google My Business, position zero, making sure your website's nice, doing your keyword search will help you, not guarantee you, help you get on the first page. Of Google. How about that for summary. There we go. It's all gone quiet. It's all gone quiet. People are gradually leaving. It's like, I remember that film, Agatha Christie film. In about at five, one minute to three, I'll be on my own. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it. Elizabeth's sitting there with a little hands going like crazy writing notes. Hey, is that good? Just a wave. <laughs> hey. But no, my pleasure. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh. <clears throat> We've got that. Right, you're down to six now. Down to six. Yeah. <sighs>
Right.